We talk about food. We talk about music with musical dudes. Finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. You're listening to Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, uh, DJ Never Forget. Terry Diabolic will be in shortly. Uh, big show today, big week. Um, it's gorgeous in Brooklyn. Uh, that tune you just heard was Take You by AC Slater. The Taya Tay remix, uh, which we uh, are part of, along with our good friend JPEG, and uh, who is, uh, we're all based out of Brooklyn. And the tune comes out tomorrow on Bport. Uh, big releases from Not a Strom, uh, Drop the Lime, uh, Udachi. So, you know, if you're a fan of that Trouble and Bass family, you know you're going to like this. Who Terry Dalabillock in the house. Yo. I mean, who isn't a fan of that stuff? I don't know. Um, we know one guy who's a fan of that, and that would be our good friend Phil, who is sitting here with us in the studio. Phil, welcome. Thank you so much. That's all right. It's all right. It's a little bit of a broken headphone. No one's gonna. No one's gonna see it. So, we had the pleasure of meeting Phil last night through a good friend, uh, Ruth, uh, and he treated us to an amazing dinner at Bozu last night. But that is not why you're here. We could talk about Bozu, but that's not why you're here. Uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, hey, let's pull see. closer. Yeah, pull a little closer. Hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm getting uh, ready to open my first restaurant here in Bushwick. Uh, right next door to Roberta's, uh, it's called Momo Sushi Shack, and I'm uh, doing it with the <clears throat> I'm doing it with the owner of Bozu, who's going to be the head chef, and then ironically enough, the uh, the owner of the now defunct Boogaloo, Chance right. Johnson, who who me uh, 
who uh, where I used to work at, you know, Boogaloo and we threw the original Trouble Bass parties, which is back in the day, which is great. AC Slater will be in studio today. I forgot to say is on his way. Um, P.S. Full disclaimer: We met Momo last night. You met Momo last night. Very sweet girl. Yes, yes. Very. English not so great. English not so great. But the kindness <laughs> translate across all boundaries. Yeah, Momo is the uh, the manager of Bozu, and uh, we love her so much. So uh, we kind of basically named a restaurant after her. <laughs> now, uh, one of the things that I found last night about the food, um, we were talking about your inspirations because there's all sorts of different flavors going on. Um, is that you talked to me about how when you get to the high end of a certain like Italian or French culture. The ingredients sort of like are very rigid. It's like you can only use this. But when you get to the higher echelons of Japanese culture, it's a little bit more flexible. And Bozu is a great example of that. And you can talk about some of your dishes that really showcase that sort of approach. Um, well, I mean, uh, it, first of all, it's not my dishes. It's Makoto Suzuki. Of course. Of I, course. Do, I do not want to take credit where credit is not due. But uh, I think the greatest example of it is the, uh, <clears throat> the tofu salad. That you had last night. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's basically it's basically the concept of the caprese salad, which you know, which everybody knows is the tomato and basil and mozzarella. And he took the ins- inspiration for that, and uh, and then everything on that plate was basically Japanese ingredients. You know, you have uh, soy sauce, mirin, and all that. But then he infuses it with tomato and basil, and instead of mozzarella, he uses a, a, a silken tofu that he presses. And to take out out all the water, so it actually literally has the texture of mozzarella, as you can attest to, I guess. And yeah. so, and probably one of the most beautifully cut pieces of avocado. Yeah, I, I, I it, <laughs> it, it's it's amazing. It's like a spot, a cut spiral. Yeah, so they they basically just take about an eighth of an avocado, and then they 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 do paper thin slices, and then they do kind of like almost like a you know, like a spiral, like almost like a shell, and then they fan it out. And I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like they do have 500 and $600 knives, but the, the execution, yeah, the execution, like I'm good with the knife. And sometimes I'll sit there and I'll cut up an entire avocado just trying to recreate it. And I can't do it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, A lot of your dishes also um, use a lot of fermentation and a a bunch of the ingredients you said, Oh, they cooked this for months or years or things like that. What is the process? How, when did you guys figure that out? That type of, uh, like really long term approach to some of these dishes. Um, I think I think a lot of different cultures, you know, obviously do all sorts of fermentation and pickling and stuff. Uh, Makoto's uh, Makoto's kind of like a mad scientist. Uh, that I don't know if you guys saw it or not. In that middle room there, he has a uh, they, they they call it like the shochu gallery, mm-hmm. which uh, mm-hmm. shochu is basically you know distilled rice alcohol. Right. And uh, you know he has uh, all sorts of. Uh, crazy infused shochus like there's the strawberry that we're serving right now that's been in there for five years um the grapes uh, i'm we sorry have, it's, it's been in there for five years yeah the strawberries have been in there for five years because you know the alcohol preserves it but uh hmm. but also to the uh, the the grape one there's a, a, a grape shochu that he actually grows the grapes they're concord grapes that he grows in the backyard right there in brooklyn right right there in williamsburg and then he picks the grapes every year and then puts them in the shochu and then serves them two years later <laughs> so wow, wow so you you said you know the You've been an eternal waiter, yeah. And you've been here in six and a half. Um, you know, we live on on Grand Street, and we have seen all these restaurants kind of start to pop up. Especially, like I remember trying to go out to eat four years ago, and it was yeah. all Dominican, Puerto Rican. Yeah. So especially in your little corner and what you've seen, you know, Bozu is kind of like you know commonplace now. But you know, what how is the lands what was the landscape six and a half years ago, and how has it changed? Well, you you know, ironically is uh, is I've worked at Bozu for three years, but I um but. Uh, in 2001, I helped open Alioli, which I, you, do you guys remember mm-hmm. Alioli, the uh, the tapas restaurant, which yeah. I think to this day was the greatest Spanish restaurant ever in ever in New York but City. Short lived. Short lived. It was there for four years, and uh, you know, it, my my friend Moni, uh, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, was uh, Moni, and uh, he's one of these guys that takes on a project, sees it to its end, and then shuts it down. You know, right? right. So, um, yeah, the landscape. Uh, I mean, there, there there used to be nothing there. It used to be, you know, Black Betty, you know, there was Black right. Betty, Black Betty, and Alioli, Stingers, Iona's, and that's about it, you know. And, yeah. Uh, and now, well, now, Diner and oh, well, Diner too. Which yeah. oddly enough, before I worked at Alioli, I worked at Diner for a year and a half. Uh, but you guys are so. I mean, how to put this? Uh, you know, you, I don't want to say you guys are the grandfathers, but you're you're sort of the the old school of the new school, yeah, <laughs> school Williamsburg dining yeah. scene, and Bozu is unlike any restaurant in Brooklyn. Yeah, there's none of this. You know, I mean, Walter Foods does its thing with the whole sort of like Manhattan bistro mm-hmm. in Brooklyn. Uh, Roberta's does the whole farm fresh thing. Um, 
you know, uh, Rise also doing that whole sort of like uh, speakeasy type of deal. Same with like Hotel Del Mano and that. You know, so where do you guys relate with these new restaurants? Is there do you still feel that you're part of the community, or are you guys off doing your own thing? Well, well, I, I definitely think you know a lot of the uh, the restaurants that you just named are you know if, if you list the top ten you know anybody's top ten restaurants, all the places you name are probably going to be on there. So we're we're definitely in like you know the class of everybody's favorite restaurants right. in Williamsburg. But I mean, as far as the food goes, uh, that's I respect Makoto so much because it's like his food is really unlike anybody else's. It's sometimes people ask what what it is it is japanese and it's like i almost feel it's a disservice to call it fusion because it's so eclectic right. and weird but i wouldn't call it fusion yeah i definitely well I, for lack of a better word sometimes people call it fusion or people call it tapas but it's like it's kind of like unto itself almost you know um so we're gonna take a break play a song i'm gonna come back we're gonna talk about the new restaurant awesome um hold on a second but yeah uh anyway big shout out what's up ac just walking in up, eating some pizza uh we got Phil from Bozu and Momo Sushi coming up. Uh, we're sitting in lovely Roberta's. And then also, big shout out to Fairway Market. Uh, what do you have in Westchester? Pelham, to be specific. That offers you free parking and under one roof. The most enjoy, the most enormous selection of organic fruits and vegetables, organic and all-natural groceries, the finest butchers and prime and grass meats and poultry and earth, the most expertly chosen seafood, olive oils, cheeses, and the lowest price national brand of standard goods. You have Fairway. Boom. Like no other market. Fairway is opening in Pelham on Wednesday, the 14th of April. More information. Fairwaymarket.com. You know it. We love it. We go there in Red Hook. DJ Never Forget. Take it away.
Welcome back to Snacky Tunes on HeritageRadioNetwork.com. That was just a exclusive Alley Love uh, Jokers of the Scene remix. Yeah, it was rejected for some reason. I, Apparently, the internet rejects nothing. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know. It's it sounds like a hot track to me. Who knows what's going on these days? Anyway, we are uh, in studio with Phil uh, from Bozu and the new Momo Sushi Shack, which is opening up right next to lovely Roberta's, who's always supplying us with fresh pies. Get in, get in there, never forget. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Momo's uh, and the food and the approach to it. You know, Bozu, uh, as you said last night, has been open for six and a half years, has a menu that's very set for obvious reasons because it's delicious. And Momo is going to be a continuation and then a variation on that? Uh, yeah, I think I think uh, the plan is is the uh, the initial menu will be almost a mirror image of Bozu men- Bozu's menu, maybe a little bit scaled down because uh, we have a really small kitchen next door. And uh, I think I think we're gonna um, we're gonna try to like uh, you know uh, start some relationships with local and organic vendors of uh, you know of everything. And so it'll be kind of like a like a basically Bozu but using more local and organic ingredients. Yeah. So will that make the um, menu more seasonal? Uh, definitely more seasonal, you know, definitely. Which is really interesting. Now, you know, to just say how Grand Street and that area has changed, Morgan, the Morgan Stop area, this has really been changing in the last year and a half, two years too. I mean, and, it's, and is there any reason you might, as like a restaurateur, why people have flocked to like this general, this specific area? Well, I think... I mean, the, the the apartments are not cheap out here. I mean, you know, it's there, there's no really cheap apartments anywhere in New York, I guess. No. But but um, he, I think I think people kind of came to the realization that like, okay, I, ha- I have twenty five hundred dollars to spend on my apartment, so I can get a small little place in the East Village, or I can get like a mansion out in the ghetto, and still, you know, especially right here, it's so prime because you're only a half a block from the yeah. L train, so you I can be call this the ghetto. Well. It was a couple yeah, blocks over. Two, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, well, yeah. That, I, actually, that, I, I always like to say this is like a little oasis because if you right. go in three blocks in any direction, it's it's way worse than right here. Do you remember but. the syrup room used to be up on like 100 Ingram Street off the stop a few years ago? This like underground like party space. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do actually. It was off the space. This was when it was not. There was not even Roberta's over here. Yeah, that was um. It was it, it was, was touch and go. My, my my first apartment actually was over on Willoughby and Wilson, and that was in I guess ninety nine or whatever, and it was it was definitely no joke. <laughs> so you said that a lot of uh, new options on the menu are going to be vegan and even vegan friendly. Yeah, well, well, you know, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but um, Bozu is kind of a vegan destination restaurant. Just I run, no. they not on purpose. It's just you know Japanese cuisine has a lot of you know vegan stuff. And uh, we're on a lot of different vegan websites because I think there's a total of like maybe 11 or 12 different vegan options on the menu. Oh. Like last night, the Inari that you had, uh-huh. the uh, tofu salad, a couple other things were vegan. So, yeah, I mean, and what we, we've always talked about this and we talked, we just ate at the, um, my, uh, the standard Miami. Mm-hmm. And restaurants that can have great meat options. But also diversity for vegetarians and vegans mm-hmm. are kind of like the winner because you're not just like I'm going to a steakhouse and your v- vegetarian friend is like, I guess I'll have a salad. Yeah. Uh, or you know you're going to like a vegetarian place and you're sitting with like a pile of whatever that you don't you know raw vegetables that you you know you want. But yeah. obviously you can see time and time again the restaurants that are like really successful the ones that have give you know credibility to both sides of the uh, the eating coin if you will yeah of course why why count anybody out <laughs> so what what um what most excites you about the new restaurant i mean this is this is you know another baby of yours going out into the world this isn't like uh just like a dj track drop in or just like anything like that it, this is a serious brick and mortar establishment yeah so why do a new place and like what's getting you excited about it well uh just just the fact that there's i think that there's so few options out here and i think that everybody's going to be so psyched to have us out here i mean most mostly everybody in the neighborhood already knows bozu anyways so there's a little bit of a buzz around the place but also you know um i think it's kind of rare in new york to find little pockets where there's no restaurants (laughs) and you know if i I mean how many restaurants are out here right now four (laughs) yeah and there's like that place that's a few blocks away that i can never remember what's that uh, some cafe Obviously, Life, Life Cafe, Life, yeah. yeah, and that halal place on the corner, yeah, which yeah. I'm sure is fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's the same owners as Oasis on Bedford. It's you know, oh, it's then, fine. It's, then it, it's great. Yeah, it's, I love Oasis. Oh, yeah, it's the same exact food oh. as Oasis. Yeah. Well, then it's top notch. Yeah. If you're so, ever on the Morgan Stop, yeah, and you're in the need for halal, I guess <laughs> yeah. maybe if they called it Oasis, they would have seemed like too obvious since it's just out here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, would that be like a an, a pun? 
Yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay. So, uh, when is one of the doors open to the restaurant? Um, you know, that's that's a tentative thing, uh, seeing how it's in New York City and licensing and all that stuff. But I, I think we're going for uh, the, the middle to end of May. Oh, great. So, right around the corner. Yeah. And uh, website, anything like that, if I want uh, to... No website yet. Yeah. But, you we're know, going check... Lo- we're going lo-fi. We believe in lo-fi. Check all the uh, eater... Yeah, there's, there's there's already a whole bunch of stuff online about it, you know, little little buzz good, things. <laughs> good good pre buzz, little buzz. Uh, I think I think a big buzz. I mean, I, I you know, there's there's people. I'll, I'll sit outside the restaurant just waiting for some an appointment or something, and I'll hear people talking about it like literally every two minutes. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you so much. We'll be back to Bozu before you know it. Yeah, we'll I, bring, dare, we'll, I dare you. I dare we'll bring you. AC with us. Yeah, man. <laughs> and uh, you know, if you if you haven't been, it's on Grand and Roebling. It's on it's yeah it's a uh, two ninety six grand uh, between Roebling and Havemeyer, and then uh, Momo Sushi Shack is going to be at uh, forty three Bogart on the corner of Moore. Awesome. And yeah. we'll go in for some uh, nice sake, reminisce about the old yeah. the old base days and things like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, you'll sing two snacky tunes on Heritage Radio. We got DJ Never Forget about to hop on the decks for a short set. AC Slater in the house, very excited talking about his new single featuring Ninja Sonic uh, coming out tomorrow. Uh, cannot wait and. Thanks to everybody. Here we go.
your fingers new jam popping off on snacky tunes on a gorgeous monday afternoon on heritage radio network.com did you never forget what did you just play that was the new treasure fingers track uh what am i supposed to do uh and i believe you can get that for free on the fader blog uh if you just search that up um before that was vega no reason an upcoming band on Dinner with the band this season and uh, also DJing the IFC food party and Dinner with the band party tomorrow night at Santos. You two are both welcome. It's open to the public. Starts at 7. Free food, free drinks. Two and Sam will be there. CX Kitronics, Bad Brilliance. Alvar Simone, Vega DJing, Andrew WK hosting. And Gators, who wrote the theme song for the show, will be playing live. Yeah. So if you want to hear the extended version of the open... Come, Come on out. out. But then, enough about us. And to start that, uh, to start that off oh. uh, was the new Panther Hands um, track, I believe. Some 20-year-old kid out of Brooklyn making disco. Really good stuff. But anyway, welcome. First time Snacky Tunes. Yeah. AC Slater. What's up? How was that pizza? Delicious. I love Roberta's. Yeah. Who doesn't? Now, you were saying you used to live out around here? Yeah, I live like a block from here, um, across from uh, Brooklyn Natural, like above the subway and that that like warehouse type thing for like two years and then you moved moved on up three three stops in every every yep. couple of years a couple yeah you get a little, stop, <laughs> little, little bit closer a little closer yeah but maybe this year it'll be the grand stop who knows 
So, uh, very exciting stuff for you today. You have your first single coming out in, in, in a little bit, Take You, featuring Ninja Sonic, and it is, it's a banger. Let's just, let's just put that on the banger list of the summer. Well, thank you, yeah. Um, how, did it, how did it come to be? How did you hook up with Ninja Sonic and make this track? Um, I, I, I was just working on a single, and I wanted it to be, you know, something special and not just like an instrumental with a sample, so I wanted to get someone else involved, like a vocalist and... I'm a Ninja Sonic fan, and they're from Brooklyn, so it made sense. We're friends, so just hooked it up, and it turned out really well. I'm happy with it. So it's, I mean, it's interesting, because it's like a bit of a departure from what you used to make, in a sense, where it's got rap, obviously, yeah. but it's still n- nonetheless, uh, like, in, like it's like an, almost a, a evolution. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I tried to, like, incorporate a lot of different styles as well, um, just like a big mash of kind of current styles and old styles and yeah just kind of evolve you know you can't do the same thing forever no you i mean can't. as much as i love wobble <laughs> yeah th- there's no way that i listen to it even as close as you have so it's you know it's nice to see like the old th- themes but like where the next step you know the future of it will probably lie or one of the many directions right yeah just push things you know so it comes out tomorrow when trouble and bass yeah which is, you know, big shout out to the whole Trouble and Bass Family. And you guys have a big party this Wednesday at Webster. Yeah, at Webster, we've got uh, Roska from the UK. UK funky, big shot. His first Boom. time. Yeah, first time in the States. And uh, we also have uh, our friends Tomb Crew, who are kind of like a Trouble and Bass type crew in London. Oh, so, so big, yeah. so a big BK crew. Be, yeah, yeah, big British invasion. To, uh, a lot, lot of shirts buttoned up right to the neck, right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Um, so what is so the track comes out tomorrow? But I know that you know we've we've had it since January. Uh, how do you feel about releasing um, these tracks slowly to DJs and then out to other crews? And and what has the response been uh, on the dance floor? Um, the response has been great um, from other DJs and uh, even from like promo mailouts. Uh, there's a slew of remixes, I think like six or something, and uh, they all they're all very well received, and everyone has their favorites. So uh, you know we're really happy about the response. Yeah, I'm partial to one. I just can't think of which one that is. Yeah, there, there's one that. <laughs> oh wait, you guys did one, didn't uh, you? Oh yeah, we did. Oh. But um, but that's gr- and so like it's been coming out, and so a song like this, which is sort of a bit of a departure, not a departure, but like Greg said, an evolution. Like, where do you drop this normally in the set? Is this like a is this like a closer sort of the end? Is a mid track? Is this a warm up? You know, where do you, where do you place a new type of song like this? Um, it's it's a little on the heavier side, or a lot on the heavier side. So I kind of been like sticking it in towards the end of a set, um, to kind of you know, as I build up, just make it the tracks harder and harder and uh i mean it depends on if you're playing one of the other remixes they all kind of fall into different categories so it's like a nice uh array of styles in there i always like that when um you know you don't get like five different versions of the same remix you kind of like spread yeah. i mean i think the one of the best examples is that crooker's remix of day and night i know people don't know this but, or don't remember there were like four other remixes that came out alongside that remix that i mean obviously they kind of got put in the dust by the other one but it, i always feel like it's who a, else remixed that track jokers did um and three other people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. good stuff so you guys uh trouble and basin which you're part of had a huge wmc yeah uh i think your party was the talk of the town for that weekend um how did uh how did you feel about that party first parties in the past you know what made this one so much s- more special than other events that you guys have done because I mean it was it was it was a pretty special night. Yeah, we well we've been thinking about it since last year in Miami and uh, like what you know what we wanted to do and it, it's our first one where it was like our party. We weren't really teaming up with like uh, that many other like another label or something. We teamed up with Overthrow who promote events in Miami and uh, you know we all put it together and we decorated the venue like like it was a trouble and bass here in New York and. We kind of just brought our party, like literally, to Miami, and it went off, and it was. We had a great lineup, a lot of good friends. Oh, it was great! It was Classic, yeah. Classics killed it. Yeah, it was. Everyone was just amazing, really, and we got a huge response, and we had a blast. It was awesome. Yeah. Um. Well, why don't we get you up on the decks? Let's do it. Do a set. We'll come back. We'll talk about summer tour dates. 
Brooklyn summer. Yeah. And eating on the road, if yeah. you will. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we'll, we'll, we're going we're gonna to walk you over. We'll, right. we'll talk you Hold over. Yeah. So you're listening to uh, Snacky Tunes on HeritageRadioNetwork.com. I'm Terry Diabolic. DJ Never Forgets the other guy with the exact same voice. Big shout out to uh, Jack Inslee and RecTech for producing and engineering the show. Fairy Market for being our wonderful sponsor today. And Roberto's for giving us tons of great food. We got the uh, Dinner with the Band premiere party tomorrow night at Santos, 7 to 10. It is free. It is going to be awesome. Us and Food Party. And we have um, Punch's debut, which is our disco crew, uh, opening up with uh, VDRK for Milanex Zenobi, Justin Faust, all at Santos on April 24th. It's uh, $7 in advance. It's tinyurl.com slash FOTP April. Tickets are moving, and it's going to be it's gonna be a night. It's going to be a night. I'm already tired. I got eight hours of sleep last night. I'm going to try and do eight hours of sleep again tonight, which would be pretty rare. Two back-to-back eight hours. Uh, as Phil informed me last night, he's been partying for 30 years, so and he, he's still standing, so that's not, I didn't really know if that was like a you can do it or uh, you don't have to go to sleep type of comment. But I've been partying hard for 30 years. Partying, oh. <laughs> I've been partying for 38 years. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 30 years the hard way, as yeah. we like to say. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got AC Slater on the decks, Snacky Tunes, here we go.
AC Slater in the mix. Has anybody copyrighted that phrase, I wonder? Yeah, like every single hip hop radio DJ station. Right. I think 97.1 says it uh, minutely. Right. Uh, we, I guess we should like figure out some type of like something better for this scene. Like, uh, uh, I thought All Right was our catchphrase. I mean, all Right's our catchphrase, but like, it's like when they come back, like in the, I don't know, in the stew. I don't know, like uh, <laughs> in, in the converted freighter cart. Yeah, AC Slater in the converted freighter cart, live right. on Snacky Tunes. Ba -ba -bow, ba -bow. You, you can't say that I actually uh, copyrighted Damn that. Damn it. So. All the good phrases have been taken. Uh, you were listening to Snacky Tunes. Um, very exciting week for uh, for AC Slater, whose track Take You comes out on B-Port, Juno, anything? Or just B-Port? All that, yeah. All iTunes, that good stuff. Yeah, all iTunes, that stuff. everything. Yeah. Question about iTunes. Why can't you get 320s? And if you know, and, if, and here's the thing. If you know that some sorry iTunes, but it's like if you know you can get a higher quality version, why wouldn't you just? It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if there's like some deal, like or you would think like if I was a uh, on the other side, if I was a record label, I'd be like, why can't you at least sell 192s? It's like all 128 on there, or something like that. I guess they're missing out on that, you know, the whole DJ market. I, I, I if I remember correctly, I when I first started using Serato, I 
bought a couple tracks through iTunes, and then because of the DRM, yeah, uh, I couldn't play through Serato. But is that still true? I think you can pay. They have like you can pay like a premium or like a little bit more and get like a rights free. I think labels have the option to do that. I mean, we're still talking about Beatport. Still isn't perfect. I mean, you'll get a couple tracks of yeah. Beatport that are just like, what is this quality? <laughs> I don't know if that's Beatport or if that's the people who are producing it. We, yeah. talk, we talked about it. It's not Beatport. It's like you know, I think the it's source. kind of it's it's on the store. It's on the. It's like you know, it would be on you if you're going to sell your stuff. You know. If you were, we said before, if you're going to make a shirt, you wouldn't sell it to a store with one sleeve. Yeah. You know, but some people. Unless that's, you know. Unless could, that's what you're going for. Could you like come that. up with a food analogy? Like, if you were going to make a pizza, you wouldn't sell it uh, with half the toppings? No, because then. Or like a slice taken out, maybe? Yeah, all right. Boom. Okay. This is, AC you, wanna, you should in. take my job. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <here's a quiz. laughs> I can't fill your shoes. <laughs> uh, so, um, summer's coming up. And I think everyone's getting pretty excited because, let's be honest, this is the best time to be in New York. Yeah, New York is buzzing right New now. New York is, if, if anyone has gone out at all in the week over the past few weekends, they know that it is just crazy. Yeah. It's something in the air. Because uh, this is the magic time before, you know, everyone goes on tour or leaves for the summer. And we were talking to you and you said that you have a pretty extensive tour coming up. Yeah. Summer, where, where are you going? Where can the kids see you? Uh, I'm going... Uh, next week I'm going to UK for about three weeks doing a tour there like pretty much all UK I'm doing one show in Paris but um you know you could you could find that info online I don't have the dates off the top of my head where would they go online for that uh you could go to uh myspace slash the AC Slater was AC Slater already taken yes some kid some someone took it is it defunct even is that I don't know I haven't looked at it and since I created the myspace yeah look that up and also Twitter, slash, uh, I don't even know my Twitter. <laughs> my tw- AC, uh, underscore AC underscore Slater. Yeah. Yeah. I just know for thing. Uh, You're good. See, yeah, I they can't haven't, fill your shoes. They haven't logged in since 2006. You should write MySpace. Oh, man. No, yeah. but MySpace music is actually really good about that. Yeah? They, if you write them, you're like, hi, I'm an actual artist um, who uses this. And these people haven't signed in in four years. Well, I've kind of grown to love the... The AC oh. Slater. Well, it's not just uh, uh, it's, it's or one own. of many. Yeah, the. it is the AC Slater, and I'm not talking about the one say by the bell. Yeah. Uh, let's not discuss. Him. Let's not discuss that. All right. Well, we want to thank <laughs> you. I'm sorry. I didn't. Was, was that a? Yeah, sorry, was that a? He's, no, it's he's, fine. He said some things in the press that we, we don't have to get into. <laughs> uh, oh, you legally can't talk about. Oh, because of stuff. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, tours coming up. Uh, looking forward to any places that you're going to be eating on the road, or any any uh, old haunts. Oh man, you know, I don't know. When you're in UK, it's tricky. Like there there's really good like Indian food everywhere. Like they their Indian food puts American Indian food kind of like to shame, I think. Yeah. And also uh I really like Nando's. It's like fast food chicken place. But UK is just kind of like I got some places for you in London. Yeah. I I got some tips, but outside I heard uh London's fine. Rest London's the, good. Yeah. Rest of the areas outside of it are probably not as good meat pies <laughs> yeah right deep fried mars bars i mean i always love this story uh we were eating i was on there a few years ago and we were eating out a little bit out of the ways and i was like i'm so sick and tired of like fried food and everything and i was like oh they have a vegetable burger on the menu i i will order i will find sirs i will have a vegetable burger and it was literally vegetables deep fried like <laughs> but like with like breading around it and like formed in so it was like a burger shaped fried patty of vegetables and a like, healthy option yeah. yeah and i was like i was like come on guys they're like what and i'm like all right yes technically you got me but this is not so i was like can't win <laughs> i mean I, I love fish and chips and bangers and mash but how how often can you eat it right and we're spoiled here in new york you know it's like you could get anything you want anytime yeah i yeah, yeah. my uh i went out to eat with t- my parents uh in like the suburbs of philadelphia on friday at 8 p.m and it was like very hard for us to find a place that wasn't totally slammed and they're like yeah you just can't go out past 7 30 or it's impossible i was like wow chalk one more thing up to to living in the city if i want to get like a burger at 11 p.m i know i can get a burger at 11 p.m yeah um so thank you for coming yeah thanks for having um, me and also so you people know um the udachi and our Te remix are out there uh floating around for free download the uh right the urchins 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 sorry guys urchins. from the uk and yours 
Yeah, it's out there. So uh, if you want a hype machine that or record Yours label. Yours is on record oh, yeah, label. Yeah, ours is on record label. Yeah, and then the Urchin's one is, it's around. It's Everything's around. been re-blogged. Yeah, so, so if you just, if you do blog search.google.com and AC Slater take you, you'll find some versions. And then Tuesday. And then, and then tomorrow, go out and buy it. Yeah, Beat put, port. Some, put some money in some people's pockets. Yeah, seriously, yeah. Uh, you know, we have a lot of great artists in here and this, uh, it's what, a buck 49 person yeah. per track on Beatport. That's, you know, have one less PBR at the bar. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you can go find it for free, but if you like it, you know, yeah, buy it. we would appreciate it. it. It's really good. It's really good to support that because supporting this supports the party on Wednesday and supports, uh, the you know, that you love. the thing that you love. Supports my children. The more you care. So, uh, no, I don't have any children. Our children. No, our children. <laughs> we can talk about that. We'll uh, talk about that later. Also, uh, yes. we, have a, we have a video for the, for oh. the single that I think is going online tomorrow. It's awesome. really funny. Just like a fun little little thing romp uh, and if you i'm sure if you're on ac's twitter or any trouble in base or anybody in new york i'm sure everyone will be writing about this tomorrow yeah you'll see it um all right so we want to tell us the last song you're gonna play is oh yeah i'm gonna play um a song called calm down part three the part third three yeah, the, the third, third. The series what? uh should be out this summer the, tr- the epic trilogy is this uh, an uh, exclusive? This is an exclusive. Oh my goodness! Bow, bow, bow. Uh, we need to. We they use. We used to have sound effects in here, but <sighs> I'd always like hit and it'd be like a drop for another show. Like tune in on Tuesdays, <laughs> and I'd be like, I wanted breaking glass or like a uh, cat crying or yeah. something yeah. like that. All right, so calm down, part three. Yeah, fe- featuring my friend uh, Drop the Lime singing. Oh, Mr. Luca Venezia. Yeah. Oh, fair. and uh, just uh, also our very first guest. Yeah, on Snacky Tunes. Full right, circle. Full, full circle. circle. Well, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Completing uh, Wednesday, the circle. I had a good time. Wednesday, uh, basement uh, studio yeah. at Webster Hall. And uh, yeah, we're going to walk you over. Cool. Walk me over. Yeah. So thank you so much, AC and Phil from Bozu and Momo's Sushi Shack. It's going to be awesome. It's, uh, it, next week, we have a big surprise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that can be read in many different ways. But yes, we have a very big surprise next week. Also, please, tomorrow, if you're in New York, Santos Party House. Snacky Tunes, AC Slater. Calm down. Calm down. Part three. Oh